have all your highlights from the latest town meetings. We cover school committee, board of public works, town council, and board of assessors. And later, the second annual Live to Give Gala is just around the corner, an event honoring Corey Garwaki, the story just ahead. Also coming up, library and senior center programs that will teach you how to become a computer whiz. Those stories and much more ahead on LCAT News Update. Thanks for tuning in to LCAD News Update, I'm John Torsha. We begin the show with a full meeting recap. Four boards met last week and we have all the highlights. First, the Monday, March 27th school committee meeting. The committee approved a new special education course for the high school that will improve social and emotional wellness. ELHS principal Gina Flanagan talks about the team's research and what she learned after talking to local practitioners in the mental health field. One of the things we're seeing a great deal is the students who come to us and they are either filled with anxiety, um, they're not able to kind of navigate the regular school day um, due to a number of different reasons, and we felt it was time for us to take action. And as Dr. Welch mentioned, we've been talking to healthcare providers, we've been um, kind of consulting with other districts to see what's in place. And this is, I think, a great first step in helping students uh, meet their needs. I think ideally, we eventually want to see a program where um, it's, a, it's uh, not just a single course, but eventually services could be done in school. And one of our goals is whenever possible, we want to keep our students in Esau Meadow. So the course is essentially called Personal Wellness, and I provided you a list of different units that students might be engaged in. So anything from self-awareness to health and health and wellness, um, you know, issue, t helping students deal with issues of you know, personal hygiene and anxiety and the power of positive thinking. Also, some of our students that are uh, would be candidates for this class often struggle with time management, organizational skills. A lot of them struggle with um, social relationships. Um, so giving them those opportunities to grow in those areas. Uh, we also want them to be responsible citizens. So there's a whole unit on how they can extend themselves outside the classroom. Ideally, I'd like to see them learn about voting and you know how you can be um, more active in your community as well. I'll make a motion to approve the personal wellness course and that the team will decide uh, through the IEP meetings or 504 meetings, uh, the waiver of the graduation requirement. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Switching to another meeting topic, fundraising has always been a big part of education, but are outside corporate companies taking advantage? A good idea to ask for percentage of fundraising monies that actually benefit East Long Meadow Public Schools, meaning... What's the percentage that we If you do a fundraiser for the robotics, 100% of the funds are going to go to the robotics team, right? Um, but if we do the cup stacking thing, what what's the percentage we actually get back? Do we get 5% back? Do we get 75% back? Mm -hmm. I think, what, you know, if we sign up for the wrapping paper one, we would know ahead of time, right. for every dollar you raise, we'll return yeah. X back to you, right? So we'll, if we could track that number, I think that's the one that really gets mm -hmm. us to where we want right. to be in terms of, let's not waste everybody's money on, you know, things that 80% goes to some private organization and we get 20%, right? right? right. If they're asking parents to fork over $20, $40, how much of that is actually coming back to the schools? Would you put a question on the... Uh, I would put a question yeah, on there, yeah. I think it goes on the form. Yeah. What percentage of the fundraising directly uh, comes, direct, or goes directly to East Low Middle Public School. Yeah, we well, did talk about the fact that we haven't had a fundraising, you know, policy before. This is something new, and it certainly can be a work in progress. So right. I don't think it has to be perfect to begin with, but um, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction here. I mean, we can we can we can table this until the next meeting and revise the form and bring it back again. Yeah, yeah. that's the way. As, uh, is everybody good with the policy itself? Yes. Yes. So yes. that we're only working on the form. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. How's that sound? Sounds good. good. Next, we take a look at the March 27th Board of Public Works meeting. DPW Superintendent Robert Perrin dives into detail about the state-required water system evaluation. Um, and you can see, we've talked about this a bit, and it's been in the press now, that late in, in 16, um, Springfield Water and Sewer Commission, um, in the interest of, of better protecting the water supply, had decided to significantly increase the chlorine residual in the water that it sends out of its treatment facility that we receive, that Agawam receives, that Ludlow receives. Um, still within acceptable levels, but <coughs> their goal is to try to make the water 
water safer by maintaining a higher level of chlorine in the water so it's less prone to having any um, bacteriological issues or any 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 issues um, down down the, down the stream we're required and every water supplier is required to maintain a residual level of chlorine in the water supply for protective purposes um, so we may be adding it if it gets too low ourselves we traditionally have and we have for probably 15 or 20 years at this point All right. also at that meeting building facilities manager Bruce Feeney provides information about previous town building projects and reveals how much money they've been saving kind of did a handout I know we've been talking about energy efficiency projects um, since I, I have some information I received from back to, uh, till April of 2010 if you add up all these projects we've done for the past uh, seven years um, our annual savings is roughly one hundred sixteen thousand three hundred ninety one dollars um, it's kind of nice to look back and see and see what all these projects we've done and uh, and totaled and what we're, we're kind of saving for the town as far as our utilities. Going down the list, we review the Tuesday, March 28th town council meeting. With only four council members present, the two public hearings on the agenda have been rescheduled due to the supermajority rule. The meeting then jumped into the town manager's report. The health director and I continue to work with a group of towns on a new waste disposal contract. We also met with representatives of our trash hauler Republican, Republic um, to institute all the recycling opportunities East Long Meadow has available in our contract. Right now there are some pieces, some opportunities that we probably can tighten up along with some of the business practices that are going on. Um, maybe they need to just step up a teeny and they're all on board for that. Next, the Board of Health presents the dangers of marijuana and explains what we can do as a community to prevent it from reaching our youth. We know we don't want youth to use marijuana because their brains are still developing into the mid-twenties. Developing brains are really, really <coughs> susceptible to alcohol, marijuana, and other drugs that you put into it. It can actually change the brain for life. And the earlier you are when you start using substances, the more likely you are to develop an addiction later on in life. Um, and right now in Massachusetts, more adolescents are seeking treatment for marijuana addiction than all other addictions combined, which is pretty significant. The next slide is what uh, we are, I think, most concerned with. Uh, Marijuana-infused edibles are the fastest growing segment of the market and they present particularly challenging issues for public health and safety. Dr. Kevin Hinchy compares the noticeable differences between alcohol and marijuana advertising. The problem with alcohol though is you know what it looks like. Uh, you can put it in a cabinet that it doesn't and you can lock it up. These edibles look like the regular candy that the kids eat. The gummy bears look just like any other gummy bear. So these are accidentally eaten uh, by uh, uh, elementary school kids because they're in the house. They don't look any different than any other. And there's no other way to regulate it. We can't say you can't make these. So it's either you get all edibles or none. And the pictures of how they uh, package it is really concerning in that they make them look like the, uh, the candy bars and the candy things that you can have at home. The Board of Health will be moving forward with placing a question on the upcoming June ballot to allow residents to vote on whether the sale of recreational marijuana should be allowed in East Long Meadow. Due to the time constraint, the Board of Health is requesting that the Council waive the 50 signatures in order to place the question on the ballot in time. So the only way to ban this is by town vote? Our biggest concern is the edibles, and right now the law doesn't address that and doesn't allow us right. to do that, so there isn't any other option. Um, this is a great way to get the word out so that people are aware, so that they don't, you know, find out at the last minute that this is on a ballot. But if you're, the more signatures you gain, the more people will become aware of what you're trying We're to accomplish. Right, and right. that's right. why we've chosen not to do that and have the community forum as a way to educate the voters. All community members are encouraged to take part in these two informational nights. First, the April 13th Youth Safety Committee presentation with speaker Dr. Ruth Pody, who will discuss the neuroscience of addiction and the effect of substance on the developing brain. Again, this event will take place on Thursday, April 13th at 6 p.m. at Birchland Park Middle School. Then on April 27th, the Community Forum on Local Control Options regarding Retail's Marijuana Sales. 
This event will also be held at Birchland at 6 p.m. Feel free to contact the Health Department for further information at 413-525-5400, extension 1105. Finally, the last meeting we cover, the Tuesday, March 28th Board of Assessors. Director of Assessing, Diane Bishop, highlights the importance of the income and expense form for industrial and commercial property owners. The form will determine market income and expense levels. Uh, the income ex uh, and expense forms to all commercial and industrial property owners were mailed and they're due back by May 10th. If these are not received back completed, they, there is a $250 fee um, which is added on to their uh, taxes. I did send a press release out to the reminder. A press release was posted on our town website, the main page, and we also put a press release on the assessor's webpage so anyone who has signed up for any notification from the assessing department received it directly to their email or their cell phone. Uh, so I do encourage people if they're looking for information, deadline, etc. We do post everything on the website. Moving ahead to events, the Cory Garwaki Foundation invites the community to a heartwarming celebration. Mark your calendars for the Live to Give Gala. Cory Garwaki, a former East Long Meadow High School student and Westfield State graduate, was born with a rare life-threatening condition known as short gut syndrome, meaning that the majority of his intestine was missing. Doctors only expected him to live just a few days after birth, but Corey created his own path and lived to the miraculous age of 27. The foundation is dedicated to improving the lives of families coping with chronic illnesses. The Live to Give Gala will have food, friends, music, raffles, and a silent auction, all in support of a foundation as strong as Corey's spirit. The meaningful event will take place on Friday, April 21st at 6 p.m. at the Log Cabin in East Hampton. Tickets are available at CJ gfoundation.com. Now it's time for our weekly segment, Library Learning, where we will let you know what's happening at the East Long Meadow Public Library. Last week, the library received a special visit from America's most influential First Lady. An afternoon with Abigail Adams has always been a library favorite. Presenter Carol Billfield played the part to a T. Participants enjoyed a truly unique history lesson as they asked questions and traveled back in time to a monumental time period. Overall, a huge success. Moving on to upcoming programs, get ready for some upbeat fun at the Music of the West African Chora program. Musician Sean Gaskell performs an educational demonstration on the Chora, an ancient 21-stringed harp from West Africa. Get ready to sing and dance on Wednesday, April 12th at 6 p.m. Registration is required. You can say goodbye to overwhelming technology courses. The library has created an easier way to navigate through the internet. The library has set up four mini computer classes for the month of April. The sessions will focus solely on one topic. Take one class or all four. Start your morning off with the basics of searching the internet. Receive one-on-one -on -one help from the tech-savvy librarians on April 13th at 9.30 a.m. Space is limited, so make sure to register in advance. East Long Meadow High School students will also be providing their technical skills. The younger generation grew up with computers and they're ready to give senior citizens their full attention on what they need to know. All seniors are welcome to learn about laptops, tablets, and phones on Friday, April 21st at 11 a.m. at the Pleasant View Senior Center located on North Main Street. Another informational program is heading over to the Senior Center. Learn how to keep yourself safe from credit card skimming. Skimmers are devices that allow hackers to steal money from your credit card. Skimmer devices are usually put over ATM machines and gas pumps. Research and Special Projects Manager Robin Putnam will provide tips on how to spot these skimmers and most importantly, how to keep your money safe. Don't miss it on April 7th at 11 a.m. at the Pleasant View Senior Center. Well, that will do it for this edition of LCAD News Update. Be sure to stay connected with us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at LCAD01028. And don't forget to watch us on cable channels 191, 192, and 193. For cable channel times, make sure to check out our LCAP program guide. Guides are available at the Town Hall, Library, Senior Center, and through our website at eastlongmeadowma.gov. Until next time, I'm John Torsha. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.